please welcome to this stage our billionaire. Uh, our You know, you're not supposed to believe everything you hear. Uh, when George gave me a call to indicate that he would be honoring me, and I was considering myself a part of a greater family of, of uh, business folks inside of my shop, my brother, and the rest of our family and friends, he said, Mike, there'll be one contingency. I said, what's that? He said, you got to show up. I said, well, you know, George, I do understand that. Uh, but it's so similar to the dreams we have out here. <clears throat> now, we all have dreams, don't we? Yes. What's the first thing you have to do when you have a dream? Show up. you got to wake up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, then you need to sit up, and you need to stand up. And as you move in that direction, you know, frequently we're going to have those great family members is going to say, you know, maybe you shouldn't try going into business for yourself because, uh, you know, Tyrone did it, we know what happened there. Uh, the same family members that may come to your house to visit and not leave for a month, the ones that are there trying to advise you not to fulfill your dreams. Well, after you wake up and stand up, sometimes you just need to tell them to shut up and get out of your way. It's a uh, proud day today for me to address briefly you, the stewards of George Frazier and company, the stewards of his dream, his vision, that we who live in a capitalistic nation need to realize that if we lived in a socialist nation, we'd be called socialists, right? If we lived in a communist nation, we would call what? Communists. Well, we live in a capitalistic nation, so therefore we are capitalists. Now, you know, when we were coming up, we were wearing our afros and daishikis. Capitalism used to be a bad word. Oh, that represented the slave master imposing uh, emphasis and influence on the slaves, etc. Exploitation. Well, then we continue to believe in the concept, but we were backwards in that concept, you see. Well, we have to realize that exploitation does not necessarily mean a bad, is not necessarily a bad word. It is what you do in business. Mm -hmm. You see, there are times when we have to change our mind and our thinking. i give you an example. How many of you think outside the box? Raise your hand. All right, for those of you who raise your hand, I'm about to spank you. <laughs> Why? Because if you lived outside the box, doesn't that presume that you are in a box? And you see, the system will put you and block you and, and hold you back by making you think that you're in some kind of a box that requires you to do only certain things. Lisa told you right now, and, and Sonia both said, listen, we don't even think there's such a thing as a box. There's only the horizon. And we can pursue and prosecute our opportunities. And did those sisters walk up here with entrepreneurial, capitalistic swag or what? Yeah. Congratulations. I ask you a simple question, what would your life be like if you could eliminate the fear of failure? Come on. You see, that's two words. Think about it for a moment. Fear and failure. Fear is nothing but a mental construct. It is not of nature. It is not the grass growing. It's not rain falling. When you were born, you were absolutely perfect. Everyone in this room was absolutely perfect. You allowed yourself to move in a direction that took you away from that perfection. Now, I suggest to you that there's no such thing as fear because it is a mental construct. Second word, failure. I say to you there's no such thing as failure. You might say, well, Michael, what are you talking about? 